Okay, guys, let's talk about the 4JX1 diesel uh, from Isuzu. Now, say you, you're looking at buying a Holden Jackaroo diesel um, because you can get, still get them quite cheap, especially if they've got problems with the injectors. Or well, say you've got a, a Holden Jackaroo. It's going okay at the moment, maybe, but you can sense it's going to need some, some maintenance in the injector area. Should you, should you buy a, a Holden Jackaroo cheap or, or fix up the one you've got? Or should you just move off to a different type of vehicle, you know, a Toyota or a Nissan or Mitsubishi or whatever, or just get a newer vehicle? Well, of course, the problem is that the um, 4GX one was the first of, of really mass-produced vehicles that employed direct injection, or one of the first. It was groundbreaking and award-winning at the time because of that. Now, since then, of course, pretty well every diesel engine are now petrol engines are moving to direct injection where the injector is right in the combustion cylinder and subjected to the enormous heat of combustion and the pressure involved and therefore they all get stress on the sealing system that seals the injector into the head. No matter which brand of vehicle you buy it's inclined to the same problem as the 4J X1. Now, this was emphasised to me the other day when I was in the main street and the Toyota Prado, which of course is la the Land Cruiser Light, I always call it, you know. They came out with a 3-litre double overhead can, 4-valve cylinder, direct injection, turbocharged diesel, almost exactly the same as a Holden Jackaroo. And it was blowing smoke and belching out. And uh, I helped the guy out. And, and yes, that Toyota uh, engine had failed sleeve seals. Now, I'm not saying that all vehicles of the modern ilk are like that, but you can see that um, there are some certain inevitable consequences when you adopt a certain technology. In order to achieve the efficiency of direct injection, which you have to do now to meet emission regulations and fuel efficiency regulations, once you do that, you've got efficiency, but you've got to have increased maintenance with it. Now, people complain about the maintenance bills on new vehicles, and this is one of the reasons why. Uh, manufacturers are having to, and also wanting to, adopt more and more complicated technologies that require much, much higher levels of maintenance. In fact, it's common practice for manufacturers now to basically sell their vehicles with very little profit on, if any at all, but they make most of the money on servicing the vehicle for the time that you own it. So are you going to get a better situation if you trade your 4JX1 up into a newer vehicle? Well, you have a newer vehicle, but you've got to realise that once you start on this cycle, you are in a cycle. If you want to avoid problems with this type of engine, you're just going to have to keep trading them in and flogging them off for a much reduced price once you start to run up higher in the kilometres. So there's your choice. You either keep the vehicle you've got and maintain it, or start to get into this cycle where you just keep trading in vehicles. Now just from a point of view of sustainability, my thought is this idea that we keep building new vehicles all the time using up an enormous amount of resources and energy and then crush them after five or ten years because nobody wants to fix them, it must use a lot more energy and create more pollution and pressure on the environment than simply maintaining an older vehicle. That's my 10 cents worth. Now, you may disagree with me. Good, well, make a remark, you know. I mean, you know, unless you're a troll, I'm always happy to hear anybody's opinion. Uh, I'm not the only guy who's had an education on the planet. So, uh, but that's my thoughts on it, you know. Uh, personally, I still own a Jackaroo. I use it to, on uh, my property up in the central Australia. Um, um, it's a terrific thing for going out prospecting you know, inspecting stock, going roo shooting and stuff like that, you know, it's powerful and so on. And if you keep the maintenance up and you've got a Tech 2 handy, it's a very reliable thing, you know. And, you know, that's the thing about the Jackaroo. If you get Tech 2, you're pretty well right as far as maintaining the computer control components uh, once you learn it, you know. Um, but you try and get a diagnostic computer for anything newer than a Holden Jackaroo. <laughs> I'm afraid it's locked technology. You've really got to take it to a dealer. But anyway, that's my 10 cents worth.
Happy New Year. See ya.